Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, we're going to be talking about iOS 13.4, the public release, which is coming out today. If you're watching this, uh, by the time I upload this, it should be just about live. So if you want to go update right now, go onto your iPhone, click settings, scroll down to general, hit software update, and it will be right there. So I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on this, all of the new features, and let you guys know if you should update or if you should just hold off. So this update is likely going to be a very big file size on your phone, but that should not deter you from this. That is very typical of these major point releases. So this is 13.4. Apple has seeded six different betas of this. So I've been uh, testing it out and I'll let you guys know everything that there is to know about this. But just off the top, I can tell you guys this is a very stable release. They fix a lot of bugs and even add some pretty cool new features. Now, if you're currently watching this on YouTube, uh, today is March 24th. YouTube is actually limiting the video quality uh, currently just because of the whole outbreak that's going on right now and everyone's working from home. So if this video is in like 480p or 720p, that is not something that I did. Uh, YouTube is just limiting that. Hopefully, if you're watching this at a later date, they've re-enabled it back to, you know, 1080p and 4K. So let's start with one of the most major features of this new update, and that is the redesigned toolbar here in the Mail app. So Apple has gone ahead and reverted this back to the way it should have been uh, all along. So in iOS 13, they kind of moved stuff around, but now in 13.4, they put it back to how it should be. So delete, and then you got your file folder here, you got reply, and then you've also got compose right here. So it's much easier to get to what you need. Uh, you can easily reply, flag things, forward it, whatever you need to do right from this quick bar. I'm so glad that they moved this back. So this alone is a reason enough to update to iOS 13.4. Next up is iCloud folder sharing, which is designed to let users share folders in iCloud Drive with other people, kind of like how you can do in Dropbox. I'm not gonna demonstrate that because it's pretty straightforward. You can just share different folders in iCloud Drive with other people. Super simple, but Apple really needed to implement this. Now you've got it. Next up, there are nine new Memoji stickers. I'm assuming it's these ones down here. I honestly don't know which ones are new because I almost never use these, uh, but there you go. If you want new Memoji stickers, which I don't think anyone did, you've got nine new ones. Now, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, I don't know what you're doing, but one of the newest features that was found in the code for this iOS update is car key. Now, car key is going to revolutionize the way that you enter your car because presumably in the future, you can simply use your phone, tap it up next to the door panel of an NFC enabled car and open it. Now these screenshots were found uh, in code, so this is nothing that's released yet, but I wanted to show you guys how cool this was. Follow us on Twitter if you want all of the latest updates, especially with leaks like this, this is super cool. Um, but I'm really, really excited. It looks basically just like a card in your wallet app, uh, but it shows your car and that would be such an easy way to uh, kind of open your car and unlock it and give access to different people. Uh, trunk access, you know, like valet access and stuff. So that's really cool. Again, that's not enabled yet, but it is found in the code. CarPlay also got an update, but not a lot of you guys probably use that. If you do, drop a comment down below. I'm curious. Uh, I don't use it yet. Now in the Apple TV app, there are new settings to control like data saver mode or high quality mode, depending if you're on Wi-Fi or cellular. So if you use that, you might want to look into that just to make sure that you're streaming at the proper quality that you want. Now, Apple also made a bunch more improvements to the mail app, especially with different glitches people are having. There's been a lot of issues with the mail app that people have had. Uh, they've also improved encrypted emails as well. Let's talk about some of the bug fixes in this uh, update. There are quite a few of them, so I'm going to blast through them. So just listen close, guys. It now adds a status bar indicator to display when a VPN has disconnected from an iPhone. So before, when you connect to a VPN, it will say VPN up there. But then when you disconnect, there's no indication that you've disconnected. So now it will have it'll say VPN with a cross through it. So that'll let you know that you've disconnected from your VPN. If you're looking for a good VPN, I did an entire video going over Proton VPN and their free service. Check that out after this video is over. I think you'll like it. It also fixes an issue where the camera app viewfinder may appear as black after launching. So if I launch it here, here you guys can see it worked just fine. Uh, but some people were having an issue where it would show up black that has been completely resolved in this update. Also addresses an issue where photos may appear to use excess storage. So if your photos app seems incredibly large, this will fix it. It resolves an issue in photos that may prevent sharing an image to messages if iMessage is disabled. Kind of a niche issue, but hey, they fixed it. Fixes an issue in mail where messages may appear out of order. Addresses an issue in mail where the conversation list may display empty rows. Resolves an issue where mail may crash when tapping on the share button in Quick Look. 
fixes an issue in settings where cellular data may incorrectly display as off. I haven't had that issue, but apparently some people did. Addresses an issue in Safari where web pages may not be inverted when both dark mode and smart alert are active. Resolves an issue where text copied from web content may appear invisible when pasted when dark mode is active. Fixes an issue in Safari where a CAPTCHA title may display incorrectly. Addresses an issue where reminders may not issue new notifications for an overdue recurring reminder until it is marked as completed. Resolves an issue where reminders may send notifications for completed reminders. Fixes an issue where iCloud Drive appears to be available in Pages, Numbers, and Keynote even when not signed in. Addresses an issue in Apple Music where music videos may not stream in high quality. Resolves an issue where CarPlay may lose its connection in certain vehicles. Fixes an issue in CarPlay when the view in Maps may move away briefly from the current area. Addresses an issue in the Home app where tapping an activity notification from a security camera may open a different recording. Just two more guys. Resolves an issue where shortcuts may not appear when tapping on the share menu from a screenshot and improves the Burmese keyboard so punctuation symbols are now accessible from numbers and symbols. Wow, that was a mouthful. Now let's talk about battery and performance. So on this beta, I had pretty decent battery. There have been some reports come out that show that battery has actually been a little bit worse on some models of iPhone, like the iPhone 11. Now I don't have hard and fast numbers on this guys, um, but I can tell you that battery has been just fine. iOS 13.4, so I wouldn't worry about that personally. And yes, if you're wondering about this, that is from being on a phone call. Uh, for some reason it does 50% screen on, 50% screen off. Don't ask me why, but that's not an iOS 13.4 thing. So anyways, guys, as you can see, my battery usage has been just fine uh, throughout all these uh, days. So you can see I use my phone quite a bit, get some pretty good screen on time. Now I do charge throughout the day, so that might help me, but I charge whenever I can. Next up, performance, just as good as 13.3.1, if not better, smoother, uh, no hiccups at all. So I highly recommend it in those aspects. Now overall, do I recommend iOS 13.4 to the average user? Absolutely. If you want to wait maybe a couple weeks, uh, maybe till 13.4.1 comes out uh, to possibly see if there's any battery issues for some people, you can do that. But I think that the fixes that they implemented in this update far outweigh any battery things, which by the way, are not confirmed. Just one person I saw did some testing and they got about an hour less battery. Anyways, guys, it's up to you, but I have not had any major issues with this beta. So I do recommend iOS 13.4 to the general public. So go check it out, guys. It should be available now. By the time I upload this video, it'll be 1 p.m. So go check your settings app for the update and enjoy. That's all I got for this one, guys. If you liked it, hit with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.